Hideaki Anno meddles with a strange concoction of genres in Neon Genesis Evangelion. It's science fiction, it's dystopian, it's cyberpunk, it's mecha. That's what the visuals tell us, at least. But the name tells us a different story. If you don't know of the series and hear the name Neon Genesis Evangelion, you would think it had something to do with religion, philosophy, or faith. You wouldn't even envision giant mechanical robots fighting other giant mechanical robots. And yet, both worlds converge in Neon Genesis. Anno masterfully crafts a world where he blends human emotions with sci-fi elements, creating a premise where the heavenly supernatural coexists with the mechanical supernatural. But all that glitters is not gold. The story is one of its kind due to an unthinkably unique premise. In today's video, we'll talk about the stars of the show, the Ava units, and explain what makes them so different from what we assume them to be and how they tie into the theme of the story. Before getting into the content, we'd like to make a very small request to our viewers. Please subscribe to our channel, like and comment on our videos, and press the bell icon to be notified whenever we upload new content. We'd be grateful to you, and we hope to bring you the best nerdy content in the future. So, without further Without further ado, let's get right into it. Is Neon Genesis Evangelion a mecha anime at its core, or does something else lie beneath the surface? The Ava units are introduced in the very first episode of the show when Shinji Ikari is taken to the Nerve headquarters to pilot Ava Unit 01. Tokyo 3 is being attacked by angels who want to cause a catastrophic event called the Third Impact, which could effectively erase humanity. However, the angels are not so easy to defeat, and generic human weaponry is practically useless against them. So, the only way to take down an angel is by having a human pilot their assigned Ava units in battle against the angels. During the Ava's introduction, we're introduced to prototype Unit 00 and Unit 01, with protagonist Shinji Ikari being assigned to pilot the latter. At face value, both the viewers and Shinji believe that these units are giant mechanical robots with heavy artillery equipped over their armor. The appearance of the Ava units also mimics robots, considering they have a cybernetic and mechanical exterior. When Shinji is inserted inside his Ava Unit 01, the entire process proves to be very mechanical in nature. He is placed in a cylindrical or tube-shaped entry plug, which is inserted into the spine of the unit. It is followed by an elaborate process of synchronization between the pilot and the Ava, which we'll dive into later. Then, the pilot can essentially control the Ava against the angels in battle. The Avas cannot stray too far away from Nerve Headquarters, situated in Tokyo 3, and something akin to an umbilical cord is plugged into the Ava's back, which is attached to a separate power source deep in the ground from the other end. This powers the Ava with an indefinite supply of energy. Following the severance of this connection, the Avas can continue to function for five minutes, after which it will shut down completely. So far, the Evangelions sound like they're a standard gigantic robot akin to the ones we witness in mecha animes. However, the design for the Evangelions takes inspiration from Japanese demons or Onis, which is a word you may recognize from its usage in Demon Slayer. This allows the Avas to have a more realistic and sleek design compared to the heavier designs that are employed for the mechas in shows like Mobile Suit Gundam or Code Geass. This in turn contributes to the Ava units coming off as something that's more humanoid. The first impression of an Ava unit doesn't do much beyond scratching the surface, and that's due to the very premise of the show. Neon Genesis Evangelion creates one of the prime examples of not judging a book by its cover, and the key factor that helps them achieve this is the nature of the Evangelion units. The story goes far beyond the standard mecha robot versus gigantic figures action sequences as it dives into philosophical and evangelical territories, as we can make out from the name. In short, what we know about the Avas is just the hardcover for the book. The story within is quite different. We get a glimpse of this before Shinji decides to pilot Unit 01. When the pilot episode begins, we are made to witness an angel attack on Tokyo 3 by Sachio. It later attacks the geofront that is home to the Nerve headquarters around the time Shinji learns about him being picked to pilot Ava Unit 01. Shinji refused to participate in it while a dormant unit Unit 01 with no pilot or entry plug rests in front of him. However, the angel attack puts Shinji in the line of harm, from which he is protected by the Ava raising its hand. Because Ava Unit 01 acted on its own to protect Shinji, the others in the scene also experience a strengthening of their convictions regarding Shinji having to pilot Unit 01. Ultimately, he decides to pilot Unit 01 after witnessing the injuries of the pilot for Ava Unit 00 and feeling the need to do his bit to save humanity, and thus begins his installation into Unit 01. The process is quite unorthodox. Instead of the pilot sitting in the cockpit and driving the mecha, the pilot has to undergo a neural synchronization 
communication with his unit. The Ava Unit 01 can also reject a pilot, which is why no one but Shinji could be the pilot for Unit 01. The better the synchronization rate, the more a pilot can control its Ava. Now that we're done explaining the cover of the book, let's get into what the book actually talks about. The Truth Beneath the Armor We have already established the presence of evangelical themes across Neon Genesis Evangelion, so let's briefly discuss why the angels are attacking humanity and why a catastrophe called the Third Impact is being alluded to. By the beginning of the series, Earth has already experienced two catastrophic events. The first impact had taken place prior to life being born on Earth, after Lilith unintentionally crash-landed on the planet. The blood of Lilith, or the primordial goo, created life on on Earth and impacted human evolution. This alludes to humans being descendants of Lilith. In the year 2000, scientists initiated a contact experiment on the first angel Adam in Antarctica as the first ancestral race intervened. This race is the source of life for humans as well as angels. They are ancient, extraterrestrial, humanoid, and possess advanced technology. However, the contact experiment resulted in the reawakening of Adam, which generated a terrifying explosion. The Antarctic ice caps melted, the Earth's axis was shifted, and the planet fell victim to natural disasters such as tsunamis and the rise of sea level. Despite armed conflicts escalating the situation, scientists managed to curb the catastrophe by ensuring the continued survival of half of humanity instead of allowing humans to go extinct. In Neon Genesis, we witness the angels trying to initiate third impact to bring humanity to its demise. As angels are born from Adam, they wish to exterminate the Lilith descended ecosystem on Earth and replace it with an Adam based ecosystem. Now that we're up to date with our history lessons, let's get down to understanding the true nature of the Evangelion units. These units are created using particle weight matter, which is the same substance that angels are made of. They are also a more powerful form of Adam, barring Shinji's Ava Unit 01, which is cloned from Lilith. Instead of being mechanical robots, Avas are organic beings with organic bodies that are bound by the Technicolored armor. This armor isn't something they need, and rather it's something Nerve requires to keep the beings under their control. The armor also helps equip weapons into the Ava systems. Being living organic beings, the Avas possess external and internal organs. For example, we can see the fingernails and toes of the Avas once the armor is damaged. The exposed humanoid body of Ava Unit 01 beneath its armor is composed of brown skin. It has two green eyes, four nostrils, and red blood. Meanwhile, Asuka's Ava Unit 02 has gray skin, four eyes, and bluish purple blood. The biological and organic nature of the Avas is why Unit 01 instinctively raised its arm to protect Shinji from being harmed. However, encasing a clone of Adam or Lilith in armor isn't enough. The Ava must possess a human soul, absorbed from a human during contact experiment. Unit 01 contained the soul of Shinji's mother, Yui Ikari, who has disappeared into Unit 01 during a contact experiment held in 2004. Due to Yui's connection with Shinji, it was necessary for Shinji to be the pilot. The soul would not have protected or synced with any other pilot like it did with Shinji due to its maternal instinct driving it to protect its child. Similarly, Unit 02 possessed the soul of Kyoko Langley Soryu, the mother of Asuka Langley Soryu. However, it had only been able to absorb a part of Kyoko's soul, as it only took away the maternal, loving instinct of Kyoko, leaving the original human being as a shell of the person she used to be. This drove Kyoko to becoming mentally unstable, prompted her to try and kill Asuka, and ultimately, she ended up taking her own life. Following her death, Unit 02 was made to absorb the rest of Kyoko's soul. The soul being hosted by Unit 00 is a matter of speculation, as it's never been outright stated. However, it has been theorized that it possesses the soul of the first first Rei Aonami. Meanwhile, the Rei Aonami who's made to pilot has been created by Gendo to be a clone of Yui Ikari. When a pilot is inserted into their assigned Avas in the entry plug, the plug is flooded with the orange primordial fluid called the LCL, which is basically the blood of Lilith that humans are born from. The pilot stays submerged in the fluid while inside the cockpit, but they can breathe inside like it's air. The fluid is necessary to establish a neural sink between the soul within the Ava and the pilot. Symbolically, it represents represents the amniotic fluid, which is what surrounds a human baby when the mother is pregnant. This fluid helps nurture the baby in its growth and development before it's ever born. After the neural sink, the nerve connections, and the harmonics are successfully established, it is possible for a pilot to control the Ava with
with their own thoughts, actions, and willpower. The higher the sync ratio, the better a pilot can steer its Ava. Yui and Shinji's bond allows him to be very compatible with Unit 01. Because Rei is a clone of Yui Ikari, Shinji can also control Unit 00 to an extent, as Rei can control Unit 01 as well. However, a pilot's mental state directly affects the performance of the Ava. The more they fall into despair and succumb to negative emotions, the worse the sync rates get. However, anger and bloodlust often improve performance. When Asuka joined the party as the pilot for Ava Unit 02, she proved to be extremely compatible with her Ava. However, with time, her mental state began to deteriorate, and her poor relationship with her mother was one of the main contributors. Naturally, there came a point where Asuka stopped being compatible with Ava Unit 02. It is essential for the pilot to be born after the second impact to be able to steer the Avas. Because the show takes place in 2015, this would mean that they have to be around 14 years of age. Ava Unit 01 has proved to be able to act on its own. During Shinji's battle with Sachio, Shinji is very inexperienced, which results in his failure to defeat Sachio. Unit 01 also undergoes severe damage with its arm being broken, eye pierced, and power lost. While the pilots don't take the physical damage that Ava's do, the neural sync makes the pilot feel the same pain. If an Ava's arm gets broken, the pilot will feel like their arm was broken and undergo the same level of pain. During one instance, Asuka had to be disconnected from Unit 02 after it was about to be decapitated because even though Asuka herself would not die from physical damage, she would die from experiencing the phantom pain of being beheaded by the Spear of Longinus. For this reason, Shinji also passed out during the battle against Angel Sachio. However, the Ava soon went berserk as it came back to life by itself despite losing power. In this state, it viciously attacked Sachio and destroyed the Angel. Shinji witnessed this moment later in a flashback where he was also able to notice the Ava's eye, which was a real humanoid eye made of flesh and blood. This was his first exposure to the real organic nature of the so-called machines. These Avas were much more similar to angels than they were to robots. This only makes sense considering how the samples of the first angel Adam were used to create most of the Avas after it exploded in the contact experiment. At the same time, the angels were also born from Adam. Shinji's life was saved due to Yui's maternal instinct taking over following Shinji's loss. At this point, Ava Unit 01 operated beyond the control of nerve and, by extension, humanity. The armor that made the Ava's prisoners could no longer contain their actions. This resulted in the battle being far less tactical and far more animalistic, where the Ava would display acts of savagery that would also increase its abilities to a great degree. It would also allow the Ava to open its mouth and howl, even if it was designed to have shut jaws. Unit 01 went berserk once again against the 12th Angel Lilial. Its battery power had been drained completely after the Angel's real shadow body sucked in Unit 01, severing the communication between Shinji and Nerve. With Shinji stuck in a hopeless situation, Unit 01 went berserk and tore its way out of the Angel's body. However, the most memorable berserker moment would be during Ava Unit 01's battle against the 14th Angel, Zerul. Zerul initially possessed the upper hand and managed to expose Unit 01's core, the resulting shock of which would threaten to crush the entry plug hosting Shinji. At that very moment, Unit 01 entered berserk mode and began to act of its own accord. It blocked all of Zerul's attacks, ripped off its arm, and infused the biomatter to regenerate its own arms, and then continued with the terrifying attack which crushed the angel's face. Ultimately, Unit 01 consumed the angel's body and absorbed the S-squared engine core, which had the power of eternal life. The acquirement of the engine core was something that elevated Unit 01 to a godly status. With this core, it never had to rely on an external power source again. However, this also meant that an Ava in berserker mode wasn't mindless, despite its actions screaming otherwise. It was necessary for the unit to acquire the S-squared engine core, which is why Unit 01 consumed it. It was no fluke that Unit 01 just happened to consume the one thing that would allow it to possess unlimited energy. This doesn't mean that only Unit 01 possessed a single core. Unit 01 just went on to possess more than one core with the S-squared. However, other units also possessed a core in their solar plexus, which was generally needed to conduct contact experiments or to regenerate and heal from damage, aside from aiding the pilot. But even without the S-squared engine core, Avas can occasionally operate using their own bioenergy when they awaken from their dormant state and go berserk. There was a tragic incident involving Ava Unit 03, which was piloted by Shinji's friend, Toji Suzuhara. The unit had been infected by Angel Bardio while it was being shipped to Japan from the United States. Later, when Toji activated the Ava, 
the angel took over and subdued it. It was ripped to shreds by a berserk Unit 01 and led to Toji getting severely injured. Although he managed to survive, he ended up losing his leg and never piloted an Ava again in the series. The entire situation was highly traumatizing for Shinji, even though Unit 01 went berserk for his sake. Why were the Avas created with such crucial details in mind? What could be their long-term purpose? The Avas are constantly used to fight the Angels, even if it means putting young teens in life-threatening situations. Shinji's father also happens to be the leading commander of Nur, and yet he continues to push his only son to the brink of death. It's no secret that Gendo is far from being the ideal father, but his actions are mysterious, and rightfully so. In reality, both Gendo and the head organization of SEAL wish to initiate Third Impact much like the Angels. Every faction in this game has different objectives behind wanting such an event, but Gendo and Seal wish for it to happen on their terms. They do not wish to destroy humanity, but they want to initiate the Human Instrumentality Project. In this project, humanity will be ushered into a new age of evolution and existence, where all the human minds will unify into one. Seal believes this will solve world problems. Gendo, however, has been unable to deal with the untimely disappearance of his wife, Yui Akari, and desperately wishes to reunite with her. He spends his life trying to bring humanity to its knees for the sake of reuniting with the love of his life. Check out our video on Gendo Ikari to learn more about his history, actions, and motives. The reason why Gendo continued to make his Avas fight angels was related to him biding his time. It was crucial for Unit 01 to consume the S-squared engine core and elevate itself to the level of a god. It had to gain the ability to operate forever, much like the seed angels Adam and Lilith themselves. This is also why Unit 01 was created using Lilith and not Adam. With the S-squared engine core and the biomatter of humanity's predecessor, Unit 01 eventually gained the power to rewrite life or activate the Human Instrumentality Project. Gendo had to wait until the unit absorbed the engine core, and couldn't make his move prior to that. Because the unit only operated under Shinji due to his bond with Yui Ikari, Gendo pushed Shinji to his limits over and over again. He also required Rei Ayanami to serve as the vessel for Lilith's soul. With Rei, Lilith, Ava Unit 01, and the fusion of Adam's embryo in his hand, Gendo had planned to reunite with Yui. However, things don't go the way he wanted, and we see the events take place in the end of Evangelion. Shinji and Ava Unit 01 were captured by the mass-produced Evangelions. The unit was then made to merge with the Tree of Sephiroth following rituals using the Lance of Longinus. The mass-produced Evangelions then unleashed their absolute terror fields, or AT fields, causing an explosion that ultimately revealed Lilith's Black Moon. Meanwhile, Gendo is in Terminal Dogma, which has been hosting Lilith's body. He tries to fuse the Atom Embryo in his hand with Rei Ayanami, but much to his disappointment, Rei rejects him. Instead, she takes his hand with the infused embryo and merges with Lilith, thus causing the much forbidden union of Adam and Lilith. As they become assimilated, Lilith also begins to merge with Ava Unit 01, which is something Shinji doesn't want. At this point, he is at his worst possible mental state, and feels absolutely worthless. Of course, Gendo has a huge hand in his mental and external miseries. Shinji talks about no one caring about his existence, and wants everyone to die. Miraculously, his desire is manifested into reality, probably due to Yui's soul, now that Unit 01 is merging with Lilith and Adam, which means that it has all the power in the world while still harboring its primary desire of protecting Shinji. This ultimately results in the creation of an anti-AT field across the globe that reverts humanity and Lilith-based life forms into LCL, also known as the Forbidden Fanta Ocean by fans. Lilith then gathers the souls of humanity and funnels them into her egg, or the Black Moon. The completion of this process marks the beginning of instrumentality. Seal is satisfied with these events because it is not too far from what they had intended. We have often witnessed angels and avas using the AT field as a barrier or defense mechanism against attacks. However, it has been implied and stated in the show that life, especially humans, also possess their own AT fields, which they use to keep other people away and protect themselves. Of of course, the connotation was more centered on human emotions. The activation of an anti-AT field essentially led to the unification of human souls in the Human Instrumentality Project, as all the guards were finally down and humans had reverted back into LCL. However, Gendo never intended for this to happen. He pestered, manipulated, and used Shinji for his goals, which ended up destroying Shinji's mental health. He did it all for Yui. But ultimately, Shinji's terrible state of mind led to Yui siding with Shinji's wishes and desires, 
leaving Gendo and his years of suffering in the dust. On the brighter side, instrumentality is ultimately rejected by Shinji when he realizes that nothing will change until he learns to love and accept himself. He realizes that he's not alone and people don't hate him. He hates himself. However, with this realization, he is finally able to set a strict boundary for himself after being used as a tool for so long which re-establishes his AT field and leads to him leaving instrumentality. The Black Moon is subsequently destroyed, and the souls are sent back to the life forms they belong to. Lilith also dies. Well, apparently. Marvelous Verdict The deeper you get into the story of Neon Genesis Evangelion, the more it strays away from its cyberpunk and sci-fi first impressions. The dystopia still exists, humanity still suffers, the robots are still there, but most of it takes a backseat to the bigger psychological problems. We stop pondering about the weapons fitted into the Avas and start bothering ourselves with the mental turmoil that the Ava pilots are going through. Evangelical themes also take center stage, albeit not in a religious way. The entire spotlight falls on the human mind as the show seamlessly undergoes a transformation in its thematic priorities. With that, today's video comes to an end. What did you think of the true nature of the Ava units? Did you enjoy this video? If so, then don't forget to like and comment down below. Until next time, thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day.